It's something I'd always wanted to do, you know, like I, my dream, I never had dreams of being a world champion and this and that, but I always, always, always wanted to just travel the world and fight hard, man. You know, like mm. I wanted to be like, like the gladiators, you know, like you bring your best warrior, we'll bring my best warrior and we'll mm. just see who the fuck went, you yeah. know, like that, that sort of shit. And I always wanted to be something like that. I watch movies and there'll be wars happening and they'll be doing like their speeches before the wars and like I'm getting covered in goosebumps and I start crying and everyone's just like, why are you crying now? I'm like, because I don't get to do that. Mm. That's where I feel like I was meant to be. I was meant to be on a fucking battlefield with a sword mm. or a fucking patu or something and just fucking Jeez. screaming down the field at yeah. another dude and just taking lives, bro. That's what I feel yeah. like I should have been doing. So now I feel like I get to live that in bare knuckle, you know mm. what I mean? And, and, and now I'm traveling the world doing it. So it's, you know, it's holding up. I'm loving it. Kia ora koutou katoa. Welcome back to Tides Talk, the changing tides in all of our lives. The ups and the downs, the highs and the lows. It's so good to be back in front of you guys again with my co-host, my bro-host, Mr. Chandu Grant. Today we have an exceptional guest. It's super exciting actually because it's the first episode we're doing in person. Uh, but before we get into that and before I introduce the guest... I want to give a quick shout out to our merchandise. We've got bags, we've got um, t-shirts, water bottles, mugs, Pops. you name it. Oh yeah, these these little bad boys here. So by supporting us and purchasing something and treating something for yourself, you are actually not only supporting us, but you're helping us get more motivational and inspiring content out to mm. people who need it. We share stories of overcoming adversity uh, to become something exceptional. So mm. it's an extraordinary thing and it's going to help people who may need to hear this get inspired and motivated. So we're all about that here at Tides Talk. Now, our guest is someone who is a professional bare knuckle boxer, one of the most brutal sports in the world, and he's not just any bare knuckle box he's currently ranked number eight and before we know it he's going to be number one he yeah. is an exceptional guest he is also he started his career in professional boxing and then he moved into the bare knuckle space he's not only a fighter he's also a coach mentor and trainer he's got his own online coaching in-person coaching he does lead seminars as well which is quite inspirational and motivational and he's also got his own line of boxing gloves which is super awesome you can check out his merchandise i'm going to leave all the links in the description so without further ado i would like to welcome hayes the husband how are you bro tēnā kōrua, boys <coughs> tēnā kia ora. Kia ora, kia ora. how are you how have you been i'm very well thank you Oosh, that, that's the way. How how was your most recent fight, bro? Uh, how's, sore. <laughs> how's your hands? They're looking They're well. They're a bit mum-wise, bro, but they're getting better. They're getting better. I had um, three big fractures uh, that I uh, attained in the first minute of the fight. Um, on the fifth metacarpal here, right at the top, this is actually called a boxer's break. This finger here exploded. It's called a P1 fracture. And then the fifth metacarpal here at the base, I also broke. Um, oh. Yeah. So we're about four weeks, four weeks post-surgery, five weeks, four or five weeks. Um, so not doing too bad. Um, I did my hand therapy for the first time the other the other day, and uh, the, the physiotherapist was saying, oh, look, sometimes these surgeons get it wrong, and, and you know, sometimes everything doesn't go to plan and uh, unfortunately i don't think we'll ever get your finger completely straight again how oh, so it's stuck oh, right. like that yeah permanent gang sign <laughs> uh spider-man no. and um, but so uh, i said well i was like can i make a fist yeah and they're like yeah you can make a fist. i was like well the surgeon done his job then yes <laughs> that's yeah, what that's i need if not i'd have to take up the old uh, slap fighting you know <laughs> not, too, not too keen on that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At least you always got something to fall back on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which one did you knock him out with, the right or the left? Uh, this fight actually went the distance. 
Um, oh, really? Yeah, 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 went full five rounds. Um, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So broke the broke the hands in the first minute, and then and then fought another five rounds. So um, ended up winning unanimous decision. But yeah, he's a nice. very very tough man. He's a very tough man. I think he's had over eighty professional fights. He's only been stopped three times, and I think a couple of those were just cuts that sort of stopped it. So oh, okay. yeah, very very tough, very durable man. Wow. Holy. So what's the? Do you feel the pain? Like you yeah. know, like. Like if you break it in the first round, mm. and then you got to fight. How many rounds is it? Another five. Another five. Another yeah, five, five rounds. Okay. Yeah, you feel it. <laughs> like, yeah. You feel it. Yeah, yeah, you do, do. Does does the adrenaline cover a lot of that, or uh, mask I the guess, pain a bit? I guess, but like I, I definitely knew it broke as yeah. soon as I broke it. As soon as I went back to the corner, I told my coaches that I broke in both my hands. And he goes, okay. <laughs> well, so no. yeah, yeah. It's pretty, pretty much, he's like, okay, and then just went on. Okay, well, you need to do this, 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 and this. So, did you have to adjust your fighting style? I, I had to adjust the the game plan. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the game plan that we had. I, I believed I would have knocked him out, but uh, the hands were um, jeopardized. So uh, we had to change our our fight plan. Yeah, and we believed that the safest punch I could throw then was just my lead hand jab. So for the rest of the fight, I sort of tried to just focus on fainting, balking to try and make him initiate an attack and then just jab him on his way in, then move mm-hmm. out. Just so yeah. I could try and capitalize on, on his weight coming forward, meeting my weight coming forward to do as much damage as I could with that, mm-hmm. with that jab because I, I couldn't really back up mm-hmm. and throw bigger shots. I still tried to. <laughs> it would probably make my hands worse. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think after I broke my hand, the right one, I threw another... 30 right hands after that holy yeah, yeah. so I've, i found too like if you if you break your hand <clears throat> don't open it as soon as you break it keep it closed as soon as you open it all the blood comes in your hands fucked in oh, no. yeah. so you just keep it closed yeah. squeeze a tight fist and i just held my hand like that for the whole fight you, yeah. if you watch the fight you see me in the corner and my hands just like both hands are just in a fist as i'm mm. as my coach is sort of giving me instruction and um, even when I was like trying to pull up my pants, I was in a fist and just sort of like trying yeah. to hook my thumbs in there. And pull yeah. It yeah. Yeah. Don't open your hand again. You can sort of get through the fight. Worry how, about it after. how much padding do they give you? Like, I know it's bare knuckle, but surely you get <laughs> none, n- yeah. none it's, at it's all. It's bare knuckle. Yeah. yeah. You get, um, you get uh, a little bit on the wrist and around the thumb, but yeah, knuckles just straight bone so on. So it's bone literally off. bare knuckle, Ooh. like no wrap or anything like. No, nothing. Nothing. It's just bone. Yeah. yeah. Bone on bone. Yeah, you just got a bit of wrist support, a little bit of thumb support. But yeah, this has to be bare. That's gangster. That's mm. tough, G. That's tough. <laughs> it's like primal. Yeah, 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 yeah primal yeah, instincts. Yeah. Eh? So, I really want to yeah. talk about all your tattoos too, but we'll get into that later. We'll get into that later. Mm. But yeah, I guess, uh, can you tell us about your early life and... Um, what led you into the world of boxing? I guess early life is, is the same as sort of most Māori children growing up, you know? Yeah. And my, my father was a boxer. My father was a boxer. Oh. I'm, I'm second-generation fighter. So, yeah, grew up watching my dad fight uh, from a young age. When I was young, it wasn't something I wanted to do. I, I thought I was going to be an NRL superstar. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I was still playing rugby league. <laughs> and then I got to about 15, 16. Actually, I, I was 11. I got beaten up at Wet and Wild. Um, <laughs> fuck you laughing at you gotta get a you, you're gonna get a hiding G you know? uh, <laughs> no, cause, cause I'm from Rotorua and I'm like oh we never got like you know getting a hiding at Wet and Wild that sounds like cool man, that sounds cool <laughs> like fancy bro at least you're at Wet and Wild bro yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not in, at the park yeah, or at local, the playground local dude. lake yeah, yeah pretty much <laughs> did you instigate it no 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 uh, a couple of uh, older fellas they uh Spat on my sister. Oh, I was, I was only eleven. I was like, "Yeah, pull your fucking head in." Then a whole bunch of them sort of came around me, and um, one of them started punching me. And yeah, I was only eleven. That's the first time I ever sort of been in a a fight where I was sort of outnumbered, and and the fellas were a lot older. And I just cried. I was like, I didn't know what to do, so I just cried. Mm-hmm. And then my dad's like, "That's it. Teach me how to fight." Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then your old man got you into it. Mm. Yeah. So I, I continued playing rugby league after that for another you know, four or five years. For whatever reason, I stopped making this rep team, and, and we asked them like, oh, you know, why why wasn't I in that team? Because we believed I was the the better prop, but didn't get selected. And uh, they go, oh, we thought you were injured. So I was just like, oh, fuck this. And then Dad just goes, you want to start boxing? I was like, yeah. So there we go. And I think it was like 
under a year later as the Australian Junior Super Heavyweight Champions. <laughs> oh, holy. So your dad was your boxing coach? Yes. yes. Oh, that's mean. Oh, uh, yes and no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like my, my dad was the type of dude where like if I played bad in football, he'd just leave. <laughs> and I'd have to walk home. <laughs> oh, oh, but, but I preferred that yeah. than uh sitting in the car and having him yell at me. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's uh, true. Yeah. But, um, Give you a bit of time to think about yeah, it, eh? Yeah. He's a he's a very hard man. My dad's a very hard man. He's a good man. He done he done everything he could for us kids, you know. Worked mm. hard, done everything he could. But yeah, you know, we're all sort of subject to our upbringing. So mm. um, his was tough as well. So well, as well, his was tougher than mine was for sure. I feel so, like everyone's generation, like the older, like my grandfather's was probably tougher than my father's and his was tougher right. than mine. But like, I mean, in, in in that aspect, man, like it's it's all, it's all tough. Yeah. Like it's all fucking tough. Yeah. Uh, you know, the father doesn't know. The life of the grandfather. He only mm. knows his life. And yeah, it's tough. It's tough. And who's to say it's not? Yeah, and then exactly. I don't know the life of my father. You know, so my childhood I thought was tough. My mm. upbringing was tough. Yeah, I was the only one out of my siblings that really got physically disciplined. I was the only one who got hit. So I thought that was tough. You know what I mean? Mm. Obviously, now looking back in retrospect, not as tough as my dad or my koro or, or you know the tupuna. But um, yeah, from what my experiences or his experiences or or their experiences. Their upbringings were tough. Just says what it is. Mm. Yeah. Just like yeah. So you were born in New Zealand. Oh yeah. And, Otahi, yeah. Oh yeah. And then when did you move to Australia? Um, we first moved to Australia when I was one, and then we moved back when I was five, and then moved back here again when I was nine. So I've lived um, almost thirty years in Australia on the Gold Coast. Yeah. Uh, oh, you moved here the first straight mm, away. Mm, oh yeah, mm. yeah. The place to be. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I was, I was an OG Maori here on the Gold Coast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kibra, Kibra. Went to Kibra. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I Kibra. feel like most of the Maldives here, where they they go either Kumra or Kibra. Yeah. Uh, um, all up that so, way. So yeah, eh? we lived in Kumra. <laughs> 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 lived in Kumra, went to Kibra. Uh, <laughs> I like it. Um, and then I guess, how did your early experiences shape your fighting career? You know, like being taught by your dad. I mean, I, I guess the the plus side of of uh, having my father as my coach is. I couldn't skip training. <laughs> I lived there, um, so I wasn't allowed to skip training. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I got a lot of personal one-on-one time with my coach, which um, now that I am a coach myself, I know that it's, it's super valuable. Yeah, I guess that, that was a good benefit of having uh, living with my coach. You know, I, I got a lot of – I got to pick his brain a lot of the time. We worked together as well, you know, so mm. we – I was an apprentice carpenter with my dad. My dad's a chippy. So yeah, man, it's pretty much all we spoke about. Even now, when we when we talk to each other, we have a little call it all about. Oh yeah, how, how are you going? How's the family? How's the kids? Yada yada yada. And then it's just boxing, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah. just our common ground, and it's something yeah, yeah. That really. It, it's it's both of our passions. So a lot of people do say, "Oh man, all you guys talk about is boxing." I was like, that's what we fucking love. Why why shouldn't we talk about it? Yeah, that's me yeah. and my dad. It's just yeah. cars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's yeah, that's. I mean, like if it's your passion. And you have common ground with with someone that you love. Why shouldn't you talk about it? Yeah. Same with with my partner. A lot of the time, we'll just talk about business, Mm. how to make more money. Yeah. And people go, oh, even when you're out on dates, yeah, yeah, it's what we Mm. enjoy. Yeah. (laughs) Why wouldn't we talk about things we enjoy when we're having a date? You know what I mean? And it's cool that you guys are on the same path. So, Mm. you know, you're just working in unison, Mm. pushing Mm. towards the same goal. And you want to do it together. You know, you're like a team. Both sort of, of, uh, I mean, we weren't rich. Growing up, my family, but we 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 weren't as as poor as other families. I guess. Mm. I mean, Talia definitely grew up poorer than we did. So, we're just two kids that have sort of come from nothing and and trying to make sure uh, our children don't have to live like mm. that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Not to say that we, you know, there's nothing wrong with 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 growing up the way we did, but um, you know, I don't want my kids to ever have them miss meals or miss opportunities because we couldn't afford it. You know. So, mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it's a big, big you want to leave a legacy for not only yourself but for your children. Oh yeah, yeah. I just, I just don't want them to uh, to do it tough, bro. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, I feel like uh, as a man, I should um, sacrifice my body to ensure that the people I love can live freely and and, mm. and be healthy and and you know skin glowing. But yeah, I want to retire my mum. I don't want to have work anymore. I respect that. You know? That that's actually awesome, eh? Mm. I'd love to do that to retire my 
my my mother that's mm. like yeah, a lot of mean, means goals eh? like because yeah, especially when our mothers do so much for us 100%. and sacrifice 100%. yeah and I, I get people go oh what about your dad and i was like my dad is a fucking man my dad knows how to retire himself as well you know he's just got to find the right thing a lot of my i guess a lot of my business co-papa came from from teachings that my father taught me you know he taught it well i just don't think he had the vision to capitalize on it the way that uh i now have you know and i i, I believe uh I'm sort of sort of opening doors and opening eyes for that now in our in our farm though. And yet yeah, that that won't have to fucking worry about anything like that either soon, you know. Mm. Was he a professional boxer as well? Uh he started very late. So my dad right. my dad I'm pretty sure my dad was twenty seven when he started boxing. And so he was fighting as an amateur and very quickly won a lot of titles in the amateurs and became, ended up becoming Oceania champion. I think he's ranked in the top 15 in the world at, at a time. Wow. Oh, that's um, cool. That's yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't think he had a long career. Like, I mean, I was only like six, but I think it was like from, from 27 to about 30 or 31. He didn't have a very long career, mm. you know, because he, he was a bit uh, bit older and injuries and whatnot got in the way and life got in the way, you know. So uh, he turned pro at like, shit, I don't know. He could have been like, 35 34 35 yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah which is late. which is my age now mm. and uh i think it was just a little bit too late for him to get started again yeah and um yeah so that the career didn't go too well mm. yeah. like how long did you do boxing for your professional boxing i turned pro at 21 had that first fight then had like four years off because before my before my pro debut with gloves i subluxed my right shoulder in sparring about seven weeks out which is essentially it's a it's a dislocation that doesn't tear the ligaments as a ditch it doesn't completely stay dislocated it'll sort of pop out and slip back in uh, and i did that about seven weeks before my debut but still chose to fight and that hurt it more <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, oh, right. so, but I, I won that fight i fought the former queensland heavyweight champ in my debut um, and i won that third round knockout i think that was so i had to have like a, a bit of a break after that trying to get it sorted and just, just being silly, bro. I never got it properly seen to. Didn't go and get surgery. I just like, oh yeah, it'll be good. It'll get yeah. good. Soon, She'll yeah. be right. Yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> then I had two more fights after that. Yeah, I won the second one, second round knockout, and then I fought uh, Conrad Lamb, big fella from uh, New Zealand, and I ended up losing that one on points, uh, but subluxed my shoulder twice again in that fight, um, and that was the one that sort of made me actually need to have surgery. So. <laughs> Went on a waiting list for a little bit and um, just some bad management at the time. Manager pulled me off the waiting list because he said he could just get, get it done for me and, and, and pay for it. And then that never happened. Mm. So then I had to go back on the waiting list. So it ended up being six years that I had off. And um, it wasn't until we opened up a, a boxing gym on the Gold Coast. I was coaching and I was just like, man, like I was, I was over 150 kilos. Like I'd had six Ooh. years off training. Yeah, yeah, I was big. And um, and I was coaching these people, and I was I, I just whether whether it was true or not, I was saying in my head like, how can you tell these boys what to do when you're fat, overweight, mm. and never really accomplished anything? Mm. So I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. So I went and watched some fights. Yeah, on the Jamie Meyer fight card, and I went up to um, Jamie Meyer after the after the show, and I said, hey, look, when's when's your next fight card on? I want to fight. I was like, put me on it. He's like, oh, yeah, it's in eight weeks. And I was like, oh, sheesh. You know, it's, it's, it's a bit soon. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I needed that date. I needed a timeline or I was just going to keep floating around how I was. Mm. So, yeah, I got back and, and had that um, that return fight and, and actually got the knockout in the first minute. And that was uh, my first sort of viral video. That knockout got 7 million views. How old were you then? 30. Oh, no, it was, yeah, it was just before my 31st birthday, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just points. holy. Yeah. yeah, came back as a coral. <laughs> <laughs> Is um, it all, and then and then when did you transition into bare knuckle? Oh, I I only started bare knuckle this year. Oh right, oh, right. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I only started this year. I only had two fights, and now I'm ranked in the top ten in the world. Gee, you must be yeah, good then. <laughs> my, yeah, my, I, I think it was just th that was good management and and getting the right fight. You know, my last opponent was a was a world champion in, in BKB a year and a half, two years ago. So 
it was just it was just picking picking the right mm. opponent at the right yep. time um and that's sort of what what shot me up through the ranks yeah so yeah kudos to my my manager stefan hanks for that what got you into bare knuckle like what i always was wanted it first to. i always wanted to yeah always, uh, always felt more drawn to it it was it was something i always wanted to do that's interesting because i feel like more people would be sort of like they mm. don't want to touch it there's, you know there's, yeah there's a couple of different reasons i was drawn to it one um because like you said at the start it's a lot more primal and i feel mm. like i'm a very primal sort of man or, or i want to be or i, I aspire to be mm. and then i always felt i was more marketable there mm. yeah in the uh mm. in the bare knuckle sort of field i i didn't feel like the big paying uh sort of sponsors or, or promotions in glove boxing wanted someone that looked like me in there definitely not uh as as a sort of uh face of a, of a sort of sport but i feel like uh bare knuckle would mm. um so yeah yeah i just thought it was a, a smarter idea to head over there as well as being something that i was more drawn to mm. something <clears throat> like would you say that you're a bit more raw a bit more i guess in appearance yeah a bit more raw looking but uh I don't think so as far as um, technique or style or yeah. anything like that, yeah. And then what what are, like, the main differences in strategy and, like, preparation between the two sports, like boxing and bare knuckle? Um, well, because it's bare knuckle and it's bone on bone, there's a lot more hand breaks in, in, in bare knuckle. So doing those years of, of boxing helped me skill-wise mm. yeah. and, and, and being comfortable uh, but things like punch placement, you can get away with punching however you really want in, in boxing mm. uh, because you're protected by the wraps and the gloves. So the shot that actually broke my hand wasn't a shot that I had planned on throwing. It wasn't part of the game plan. It was just a second na nature reaction, just right. something that I've done for years and years and years. You know, I've drilled a million times. We sort of separated, and as we were engaging again, he threw out a jab. So I just slipped that side of the jab and this boulder overhand right over, which is something I've done a lot of times in, in gloved boxing. Yeah. But when it's bare knuckle and uh, and I punched his head, like on the on the dome, yeah, yeah, my finger just exploded. Mm. So so what specific parts do you aim for in bare knuckle? It's obviously got to be um, a lot more precise, I guess. You've, you've mm. got different sorts of shots. Yeah, it does have to be a lot more precise, but... Slicing punches work a lot better in, mm. in, in bare knuckle. So it's not so much meeting the full mm. brunt of what you're punching. It's more just skimming across yep. them. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Being, a, being a bit so. smarter with how how you hit them, oh, not yeah. just yep, that's it. Not, square not just, on hitting yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Um, you can do. Uh, I found that the jab is very safe to throw hard. Mm. Um, but hooks, um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are, people that know how to place them better or know how to, to land those shots better, um, being that they've done that a lot more than me. I've only had two bare knuckle fights in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> On the street, uh, a different story. No. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's I'm, I'm actually heading over to the UK mid-October to do a training camp with a fellow called Jimmy Sweeney. Now, Jimmy Sweeney is like the, the greatest of all time at bare knuckle. He's, he's a middleweight. I think he's had he'd have close to 40 bare knuckle fights. Um, only lost a handful, and and two of them have just been because of cuts. You know mm. what I mean? It's not like he was getting outboxed, really. Yeah. So yeah, he's he's very good Irish dude. Lives over in um, England though, um, and yes, yeah, so I'll be doing a training camp with him just just so that I can learn. Like, look, I, I want to be the best. I want to be the best. Mm. Be an uncle heavyweight, super heavyweight in the world. So if you want to be the best, you got to learn from the best. So yeah. heading over there to uh to try and soak up as much of his uh, knowledge as I can. So I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, so. For me, I haven't really found a way to land my hooks safely mm. yet. So Are you I've, aiming for like the the jaw? Is I, that so or, or the temple? As far as I oh. know, you don't want to get temple. You don't want to get temple. So as far as I know, we just aim for sort of like eyebrows and down. Mm. That's sort of like the main target. Yeah, ah. so not the thick parts of the yeah the um of the head, you know, mm. of the skull. And these parts break and 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 cut easy mm. so that's sort of what the, what the yeah quite is. strategic okay eh, where you're yeah. placing your 100 yeah 100 yeah. yeah, uh, you'd want to do a lot more body shots in in bare knuckle too 
yeah um ah. which is something that i wanted to work on my last fight but because i broke my hands early mm. yeah um going to the body uh has an has a heightened level of um i guess danger because you have to you have to come and you have to close range and your head drops down lower than theirs mm-hmm. okay so we come and we step in and when you're in range and going to the body there's there's a slightly limited defense to your head mm-hmm. so being that i couldn't come into that range work the body and come with anything sort of big because my hands were broken yep. or any sort of like put any sort of like stopping force in the punch i felt it was a uh, too vulnerable of a position to put myself in mm. during that fight but uh, i do know that it's uh something that i do want to work on a lot more do you feel like he picked up that you'd broken your hand no. he didn't no yeah. how, how tough is it to like obviously you're do you feel the pain when you're in the ring mm. or no oh you do yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel it. Uh, like yes. how, how hard is it to to hide that from your opponent um, like like you obviously don't want them to pick up that you're injured yeah of course um, I don't know. I don't know how hard mm. it is. I know that I've got a job to do, so I do my job. Yeah. yeah. And my job, me doing my job successfully relied heavily on me not showcasing that I just broke mm. my hand. So, yes, yeah, like poker. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, exactly. Don't right. reveal your full <laughs> hand. <laughs> yeah. so, um, I actually put up a video on my social media of when I broke my hand. You can hear the snap, but you don't see anything change in my mm physical being at all like my face doesn't change mm. um you'll see me take a deep breath doesn't mean mm. fuck here we go yeah <laughs> yeah surprised so. he didn't hear that that break well was it super you loud just hear or? a thud it's like <laughs> yeah. a my fist was rattling like his yeah. skull bro so i'm yeah, pretty sure he's more true. focused on that <laughs> was that a break yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so how important is like mental toughness as well as as well as like physical toughness I in that's that's just in the condition just uh, life right you know you, you've got to be mentally durable and mentally tough um i say durable because it, you can't just be tough all the time you know what i mean mm. mental health is is like a tide yeah mm. it comes and goes um i still struggle with with my mental health at times like right now i'm going through this uh sort of phase of imposter syndrome where i'm just like i don't deserve this i'm just a, mm. you know i'm just a moldy kid that grew up in australia and you know now i'm in the top 10 in the world and i'm about to fly overseas and meet big names and 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 have my sort of image and name uh akin to them in, in some sort of sense you know so I, I i yeah i struggle with my mental health that it's just you know i don't deserve this sort of thing mm. and then um yeah, then the other days, bro, I feel like a little fucking god of war. I'm just like, mm. I want to fucking yeah. wipe this fucking earth. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. Like, it's, it's, <laughs> it's funny, and that's why I say, like, uh, it is like a tide. It comes and goes. Mm. Um, so I think that that is important in um, in every aspect of life. Mm. Um, yeah. Fighting. The changing tides in all of our lives. That's our, oh. po- that's our podcast motto. Hey, hey, I love yeah. it. I love it. <laughs> 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 no, that's so cool. And then, like, I guess... What what specific like training routines uh, are there for? Well, there's a lot. There's a lot. What what do I do um, in particular is 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 very sprint based, so to so to speak. Bare knuckle, any sort of title fight is five two minute rounds, so it's not a very long fight. Mm. It's only ten minutes, but it is brutal. Mm. Yeah. In that ten minutes, you're going to break a lot of bones. You're going to get a lot of cuts and have a lot of stitches. So I don't so much train for a marathon. I don't go for runs. Mm. A lot of my training is done on the heavy bag or on an assault bike. Yeah. Um, where I'll sprint for 10 seconds and then sort of rest for 20, sprint for 10, rest mm. for 20. What I'm trying to do is imitate throwing off a combination, then moving, looking, mm. looking, 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 bang, 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 and then moving, moving, moving. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, that, that's the type of training that I do, and I'll do that twice a day, every day. Yeah. I'm probably the fittest I've ever been in my life. A lot of people questioned whether or not I had the ability to do the full five rounds as explosive as I do, and I absolutely can. I can probably do fucking ten rounds like that, you know. Like, a, uh, yeah, I've been training hard for this. Yeah. What's the adrenaline like when you're in the in the room? Like, look, man, I think I've probably had over. I've had over fifty fights. Wow. Um, in in the ring. And I've had over a hundred fights in the street. You'll still get 
adrenaline, but you sort of learn how to deal with it, how to handle it, uh, what it means. You know, adrenaline uh, for fights and stuff like that only really affects you when you don't understand what it means. A lot of people think, oh, oh man, like, I'm scared, I'm terrified, and uh, you know, and and that does sort of play a part in their mental approach to the fight. Whereas um, I understand that it's just my body doing what it's meant to do mm. when we're about to go to combat, we're about to go to war. So, yeah. yeah, that's what the body does. Instinct, eh? yeah, that's, yeah, that's what the body does. So um, I'm comfortable with that now. And and if you see uh, my fights, I'm very relaxed in there. I'm just just doing my job, you know. Mm. Yeah, I'm doing what I feel like. I've done for thousands of years, you know what I mean? Mm. And this is yeah, what right. people have done, you know, for, for thousands of years. Got that warrior instinct. Yeah, I guess so. So I guess that leads into my next question there. Like, what does your Māori, like your Māori heritage, like, mean to you? Like Everything. Yeah. Everything, you know. You know, even, even my daughter, my daughter, my youngest daughter, she was born here. All my daughters, so proud to be Māori. Mm. But, you know, they... They never grew up on, on the marae, you know what mm. I mean? Like they, yeah. they haven't lived and experienced that side of of life, but they're still so proud to be modern, mm. so proud to be modern. And that's something yeah. that we always have. Yeah. I feel like that that's just in us, you know what I mean? Um, that's cool. So, yeah, I carry that, even though a lot of, I guess, uh, Trauma as a child came from from other Maori. You know, I was I was always told that I was plastic or I was fake mm. or I was because oh, you live in Aussie and yeah. oh, you, you this and that. And even by my cousins and and family, they were probably the worst at it. You yeah, know, I right? swear, Maori were our own worst enemies. Mm. Like we love to just try to bring other people. <laughs> yeah, down, bring, bring ourselves yeah, down. Pretty bad. For um, me. Yeah, we have been. I feel like that is changing. Mm. I, I do feel like that is changing, especially now that you know, like. I feel like I was shunned by a lot of Māori when I was growing up and now I'm sort of somewhat of a Māori figure, you know. And I am live in Australia, grew up in Australia, not fluent in te reo, mm. you know. But I'm learning, you know. So if uh, if they can sort of, I'm not going to say idolise, but if they can sort of put me on somewhat of a pedestal, uh, and even though I live in Australia, grew up in Australia, and I don't speak Māori, mm then I do feel like that is changing. Yeah, I can relate to that growing up in Australia as well. Mm. Like, mm. I suppose it's it's like a <clears throat> you're an outsider of your own race mm. in a sense, mm. but, like, mm. I, I still always felt very connected. Like, I still always felt part of the culture. I've always been very proud to be Māori. Mm. Mm. No, 100%. Yeah, 100%. I, I, I feel the same. Yeah, it, it's cool now, you know, being accepted, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but I'm also sort of like, yeah, fuck. You guys, man. Mm. I got my cousins going, hey, cuz, how are you? Fuck you, B. You used to yeah. bully me when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what now, boy? What yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, try bullying me now, bro. Try bullying uh, me now. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 but it's, it's cool, man. It's, it's really cool. It's really cool. And, um, you know, I've even got a lot of, like, cousins that I've never met met or, or um, aunties that, that are you know, married into the far now that are sort of like, oh, hey, nephew, you know, like, mm. you know, it's, it's, it's cool. It's really cool. I love the uh, Māori aroha. Like, when, when we are accepting, we're very oh, accepting, yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah, um, we do things, we do things completely, hey. Yeah. Whether it's war or love, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's 100, you know. Yeah. Um, we are very passionate people. I like um, that. Yeah. And then what led you to get your tamuko on your face? Um, and what does that mean to you? Like it's it's always been something I wanted. Yeah. Now I don't know, and this this is when I was young, young. Like this is from when I was like ten years old, twelve years old, very young. And I don't know if that came from wanting to be accepted and be like, no, I'm Maori too. You know what mm. I mean? Um, but it is something that I always wanted. And then um, yeah, I started fighting again. Yeah, my comeback when I was thirty-one. And uh, I just felt like um, I'd overcome some things and and uh, I was on my way to becoming the man that I think I should be or the, the man that I wanted to be. And, mm. um, yeah, that was just sort of the natural progression for me. Mm. Um, you know, it was sort of a, a promise myself to not go back to how I was or or to, to maintain this um, sort of... Uh, man sort of presence that I, that I wanted to have uh, in my life and so I went there and yeah got my matoura done with um, Turi Makina who's um, 
he's he's the matua of uh, of um, Tamahu. Um, he has a space up in Pimpama called Arts Elemental. Yeah, he yeah. actually done my brother in law's tattoo. Oh, did he? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Bro, he's the man. He's the man. Two's the man. Two also designed my um, he's the Huntsman uh, fight shirts. Um, they've got oh, the, true. He yeah. designed them. Yeah, oh, so wow. He's, he's, there's a Maori design on there. Um, yeah, my my manager Steph, uh, Stefan Hanks. He um, was speaking with Tali. and hey, we want to we want to put a shirt together for Hayes, and and Tali just goes, oh. Well, you know, you should talk to this fellow. He's the one who designed Hayes' tattoos. Maybe he mm. can um, do a design for you. And um, yeah, so they organised that, and, and two got it done. It was very cool. Came out really cool. Sick. Yeah, yeah, I like them. Push. And then what does that like? Do you feel like when you're in the ring, it makes like does it? Do you feel the the mana it brings down like when you're when you're fighting or like do your opponents like obviously other cultures don't have that you know like so i feel like when they're in the ring like you look scary bro that's what i'm trying to say you look scary or you know what i mean and then like <laughs> well i'm like surely surely when you're doing the face off or something something i've never mm. even thought about you know mm. what i mean i've never thought about getting this for an outward appearance i've never yeah. thought about it so so you know that that never crossed my mind so i have no idea i have no mm. idea um this was just for me and, and that, that's that's what i feel like has has gone well for me is um you know, a lot of people do say, "Oh, you look intimidating," or "You look this," or, you know, Bro, I'm just being me. I'm, yeah. I'm not. I'm not being anything else. There's no mask here. You know, mm. This is just me. I just get yeah. to be me. Yeah. Um, and and uh, thankfully, people have sort of picked up on that and and sort of um, accepted that and, and and associate with that. I guess you know, mm. I, I don't have to wear a mask. So I've never thought about um, it being an intimidating thing. Or it's yeah. I find it so funny when people go, "You think you're scary?" It's like why the fuck would why why would I think I'm scary? Yeah. The, my my tattoos, my my moko being my my ta moko being intimidating never occurred to me. Mm. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. That was not the that was not the source of of uh, my reasoning behind it. Mm. You know, so um, for us it's cultural, but I guess for an outsider, I guess like could, I like guess they they be, wouldn't it really could be intimidating. I guess I'm not. Like, Mm. Th- this question isn't even part of the pod, but like, do they have you have they ever stopped you from like trying to go into like nightclubs or something, or like like a bar yeah. or something? I don't. I don't really really pair the nightclub. No. So. <laughs> oh yeah, well not nightclub, like you know, um, because I I remember they used to be real strict with it. Like yeah 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 no they were. I had one uh, press conference I had to do in the casino. Um, yeah, but they just said uh, your face tattoos. What are they? I said this is cultural. The other ones are religious. Like okay, all good. Now let me. In. Oh, wicked. What what are what are the the other ones? Like you said, religious. I but I was just wondering. that one there. Yeah. That's uh, my nan's name. My nan passed away. My mum's mum. Uh, her name is Mary. Um, and that's just done in Elder Futhark, which is uh, the Germanic runic system. Um, the first Germanic runic system. And then I've got I don't know which side they're on, but I've got two bears. I've got two bears on my head. One is a uh, more of a Nordic. Looking bear being being uh, sort of paying tribute to my religion and my um, <clears throat> Scandinavian heritage, and the other one is I don't even know what side it's on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, what they are is um, <clears throat> one is good, one is evil, and uh, they they are the thoughts that you have in your head. You know, and, oh. uh, they you can't really tell or, or know which one is good or evil because that, that's that's just life you know what i mean you, you don't know so um yeah i just have them there to sort of remind me that uh you know you have good you have bad it's just you know you like to me there is no real good and evil it's just us and them so whoever whoever's part of my us you know, i've got you, you know? mm. and if whoever's not part of my us you know you're just, you're just them you know yeah you're something else you know yeah um, so yeah, it just just reminds me that uh, you know because we've all done good, we've all done bad. Yeah, you know, it sort of just reminds me that uh, I'm still me, you know. Yeah, amongst it all. And you know, I'm not um, I'm not my past. Yeah. yeah. What What about your your arms? These ones. Um, yeah. So a lot of people think that I'm covering up old tattoos that I didn't like, and I'm not. I'm not at all. Um, if there was an old tattoo I didn't like, I'd, I'd remove it. Yeah. Mm. Um, but 
uh, I had tattoos that I did like underneath here, but um, there was just more things I wanted. I got to a point in my life where I'm like, oh, there's other things that I sort of want to do and want to express and, and I feel are a part of my journey now. And, and um, the other tattoos that I had underneath had, had served their purpose. And so, yeah, so I blacked out, went black over the top of them. And uh, then I'm going to get white, white outline done over it. So I'm going to get some some moko done and and some tam moko done in, in white, and uh, some Nordic symbols and stuff done in white as well. Oh, so you, are you going to have like one arm Nordic, one arm Maori? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, that's mean. Yeah, so that's what yeah that's what that is. Was was getting all the black like. I mean, you're a bare knuckle boxer, so you probably used to pain, but did it hurt? <laughs> my, my, my relationship with pain is very, I don't know, it's, it, it's different. A lot of people ask, oh, did that hurt? What is pain? Mm. What, what is it? You know what I mean? Like, mm. I understand that I'm not going to die from it, so, yeah. you know. But things like that. But bro, if I got a tummy ache or a headache, bro, I'm a baby, bro. <laughs> I, hate, I hate that shit. But, but things like this, where I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna die, so it's just you just handle it, you know, mm. you just you just deal with it. My sorest tattoos, um, this, yeah, on the nose, on the lip, um, and my palms, man. Ah, Ooh, my eyes, ass, bro, yeah. they're sore as. Um, they were really sore. But uh, yeah, like with, with the Matauda, uh, that was eight hours. I was eight hours just sitting there, and um, mm. it was sore, bro. Eh? It was sore, but I think it was the best place I'd been in mentally. And I, I just kept thinking, I was like, man, all my two point have done this, mm. and they did it with like shark teeth and a hammer and yeah, chisel and shit, man. So yeah. like, um, I could sit through eight hours of yeah. it, you know. Um, so that they, yeah, that helped me get through that. Do you think it's like sort of relative? to what they thought pain was like maybe their pain thresholds were different or something because they only knew a certain I'd, I'd amount say of pain. That, i'd say it had to be like meant because uh, i'd say it, uh, like all life back then was a way tougher than it is yeah. now you know I'd, you know so yeah I'd, I'd say i'd say their pain threshold would be a lot a lot mm. higher i'd yeah. say so I don't and they know. just get used to it maybe and yeah. they're used to the yeah. pain yeah, yeah. No, it yeah. would have been cool would have been cool to witness mm. So how do you represent your culture, like, uh, in your life and, and in the ring, I guess? I've seen, like, for one, for one of your um, photos on Instagram, I've seen you walk out with, like, your... Kuruwa. your yeah, Kuruwa, yeah, and that looked... Uh, um, in the pew pew? Yeah. So fighting in the pew pew? So that's actually my dad's pew pew, eh? Oh, my that's dad, cool. My dad's pew pew that's that he special. wore when he, when he done kapaka, yeah. Um, probably not going to include it in the uh, future fight kits because... Mm. Um, my opponent in the last fight, like they they kept snapping and falling off. Yeah. And then my opponent was like, it was like he was looking for a rest, and he was telling the ref, he's like, oh, yeah. oh, one of his things yeah. fell off, so yeah. the ref had to stop the fight. Yeah, and yeah. He's just giving himself an, a, a yeah. rest, really. Uh... Yeah. So we probably won't include it, but I'll, I'll try and find a way to include mm. it, maybe in the in the quarter row, something mm. like that. You know, just put that pew in there. Oh, I was thinking last night. Um, do you know what a, a maru is? Maru. Like the the V. Yeah, 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 I think yeah, I was yeah. like, imagine fighting one of those. Yeah, just yeah, like yeah. full primal, <laughs> yeah. full primal, just straight hard, <laughs> ass hanging out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to get your ass tattoo, G. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've I've had a choreo with um with two about doing my puhuru. Mm. Yeah, um, that'd be sick. Yeah. But he goes, oh, you got some big legs, bro. We're going to have to book out like yeah. a full week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah that, that'll be, that'll be uh, an exciting sort of journey. Mm. You also offer like one-on-one coaching, online coaching. Mm-hmm. You used to have a gym as well, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've had, uh, have, had two gyms now. We sort of went through a rebranding and changed after I um, went over to Bare Knuckle. Yeah. So first I had Hammer Boxing Academy, which was Thor's Hammer. Yeah, mean. I'm a boxing academy, so we did um, that for a couple of years, and that went really well. Um, the lease ended up uh, finishing up at that um, that place. We moved somewhere else, and that sort of timeline coincided with with my bare knuckle change. So we then changed to Huntsman Boxing and bare knuckle, and then yeah, just uh, some council issues came came about, and um, we ended up having to close that that site down and just just keep the uh, personal sessions going. But um, uh, Right now, as I am, I don't really have time to run a gym. 
um, the fighting is really starting to take off and uh, yeah I, I can't afford to um, pause everyone's memberships while I'm in traveling the world and and still having to pay rent back there as well. yeah it didn't make sense to me you know yeah I could have still done it from the fight purse money but what's the point you know mm. going over there and you know um, when it comes to business every sort of every uh, everything has to be an asset I can't have one asset covering another one that's not making it so um yeah we decided to just close that that site down and uh focus on the fighting and the, and the personal sessions which um doesn't really require us running a gym mm. yeah yeah mm. now that's but then so where do you train then for your fights i, I train at home and my my uh my coach has uh his own gym as well oh true so my coach <clears throat> when i first started fighting I was fighting under my dad and a fighter called Dave Turner. Yeah. Who's, he was born in England, but he grew up over here. Um, very good man. He's a very, very, very good man. Um, I've got a lot of time for him. Um, I'll give him a hiding though, but I've got a lot of time. <laughs> he's a cheeky brother. He's, he's a um, uh, but no, yeah, I've, I've got a lot, of, a lot of time for my coach. Um, and he was there when I first started. Uh, so it was only sort of natural that I went went back to him uh, mm. after that because when I when I first made my comeback, I was just training myself. Eh? I was just, just coaching myself. Mm. How did you find that, like um, motivation, dedication, um, training myself? That, yeah, uh, it's hard. I'm definitely train harder now that I've got a coach. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But honestly, man, they like, keep like, you accountable, eh? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Like if I if I can be lazy, I will. You know. Yeah. Mm. Uh, that that's sort of changing now, but even even in the way I fight, if I can minimize my effort, but but while still maintaining enough efficiency, that's what mm. I'll do. Yeah, um, that's sort of how I became a counter puncher. I mm. sort of just wait for them to attack, yeah. and then just boop, yeah. and then they're asleep, and I win. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which uh, take the shortcut, say. Eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Take it quick. Itself too, it has yeah. has been detrimental to my career as well mm. you know so yeah. um i came off a loss i had lost against a fellow called troy pilcher um who's a good boxer um but i believe i, I could have beaten him had i uh trained hard enough but i mm. hadn't yeah you know, so that, yeah. that was good that was that was a bit of an eye opener i got humbled and um yeah then after that fight is when i lost like 10 15 kilo again so yeah. i went from 150 down to 140 for my first fight then I fought Troy at about 135, and then my very next fight after that, I was down at 120. Wow! You know, so like it was just sort of, yeah, sort of kicked me up the bum, you know. Is there a weight limit for bare knuckle? In the BKFC, there yeah. is, which which is a goal goal for me. I do want to oh, fight in the yeah. BKFC, being that it's the the biggest bare knuckle promotion. Um, David Feldman's done a great job uh, with yeah. with the BKFC, and and now um, has Conor McGregor on board, so. That's sort of something that I do want to get involved with. You know, I do want my name uh, thrown into that um, mm. that teacup, bro. So um, they have uh, they now have a super heavyweight division. So that's oh. yeah. So I think heavyweight ends at two sixty five, and then two sixty five and up is super heavyweight. So I think that's around one hundred and twenty kilos, mm. which is roughly where I'm sitting. I think today I weighed in at one twenty three, something like that. So mm. um, I. A goal of mine is to be two division champ. I want to win both of those. Oh, heavyweight and super heavyweight. Mm. Far out. That's the goal. Yeah. That'd be That's wicked. Goal, so. um, you know, first Māori Tane to do it, you know. Mm. So, um, yeah. I never wanted to be, but I, I feel like I'm somewhat of a, you know, somewhat of a um, idol for, for the rangatai, mm. yeah. the younger Māori generation. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> And I, I came I came to that, that knowledge um, when we went back to New Zealand. We went back to New Zealand for a holiday, family holiday last Christmas, eh? Yeah, yeah, last last Christmas. And um, everybody that stopped me, um, asked for photos or, or talked to me were all Māori. Mm. And then I was like, oh, shit. And that's, it sort of like dawned on me that anywhere, anywhere we went, anywhere we went, I was getting stopped and asked for photos or... or Oh, are you are you Hayes the Huntsman? Um, now all Maori, and that's when it sort of dawned on me that like 
I, I, in some aspect, I must be like mm. our guy in, mm. in, in a way. And you're um, a trailblazer too, like yeah, yeah, the first person leading the doing, way, yeah, yeah. yeah, first person doing doing bare knuckle, but um, you know, and and it, it scared me a lot, bro, because you know there must be like Maori dudes, you know, that group of friends sitting in a circle and they're having a call it all about oh, oh their fighters and their favorite fighters and some more boys talking about Joseph Park or or Joe mm. Tire and this little Maori boy just goes, yeah, we got Hayes the Huntsman. Mm. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's gangster. Yeah. That's, like leading that, away right, for us. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that you're an inspiration, of, eh? Pressure, you know? um, it's not it's not something I ever wanted to be. But um yeah. here I am. So it's it, and it has bro, it has made me, you know, um pick up my act, you know, 'cause I'm I'm a very I'm very much a you know, out in public some dudes looking at me go, What the fuck are you looking at, kind of, you know mm. what I mean? That's that's just me. Right. Like I, I, I can't help that. Um I'm very territorial and very protective, so I'm out there with my family, and there's someone standing. Like, what the fuck are you looking at, bro? Mm. And then they're like, um, "Are you his dance man?" I'm like, oh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> "Now I look like a clown, man." Yeah, yeah. yeah so I'll be yeah. driving. I'll be driving. And someone in the car's looking at me, driving next to me. I'm like, "Like I'm looking at." Like, yeah. At? One day they're like, "Are you his dance man?" So it has sort of made me keep that in check. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not yeah, no. being as not being as. I guess all like. Time. Get more famous, say, hey, and then like having your name go up there, and your natural instincts are yeah. to to be that staunch guy. Yeah, and then yeah, like yeah. when they when they just come out and they're like yeah, embracing no, I, you, <laughs> and it re- you really have to like humble yourself down, eh? like bro. you know. And it was like, um, even yeah, it's just it's just it. I don't know, bro. Like I wasn't ready for this, you know. Mm. I, was, I was just I started fighting again so that the boys at my gym, so I you know I had a bit of. Vil- validity to to what i was trying to teach them so like mm. oh, yeah okay your coach does know what he's talking about mm. and then now it's this i asked for my autograph the other day i'm like i don't have a fucking autograph <laughs> bro what, what do you mean? <laughs> i was like do i just do my signature like absolutely not managers like no bro because then they could just steal all your shit that's actually cool to see the the passion you have like um mm for oh, bro. for that for our people yeah and mm. for our people like um and and unfortunately we don't have a lot of good role models mm. um even a lot of the um maori influences on social media are all very heavily into the white piddle they're all drinking mm. Mm. eating processed kai mm. you know, there's, yeah. there's not very many that are, are good healthy role models for our people and it is a yeah. problem I mean, you know because our suicide rate is colossal our, our Diabetes and and heart problems are colossal. Mm. Um, so uh, yeah, so it's, it's just that that's a sort of uh, path that now I want to travel on. You know, I, I was I was a young Maori boy um, growing up, and, and not really having that Maori role model mm. um, outside of my father. You know, of course. Um, so yeah, now I'm just trying to do things as right as I can without mm. without um, without taking too much away from who I am as a person, you know mm. what I mean? Like I've had some parents of, of fighters that have been like, oh, oh, he got into a fight at school. Can you tell him that fighting's not good? How, how can I do that? Mm. How can I tell him that, that fighting's not good? Um, if someone was bullying someone I know, I'd fucking smack them too, you know? That's, mm. It's like, I'm sorry, but I can't do that, you know? So I'm still trying to stay as true to myself but still try and be a good role model i guess mm. yeah. yeah yeah crazy crazy is there, is there a little bit of pressure being that role model um to massive yeah massive especially especially because i am that what the fuck are you looking at sort of kind yeah. of and then i've got to like dial it back yeah and, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> couple of press. but also the like the young kids looking up to you um yeah yeah but there's huge pressure yeah, there's, there's pressure, huge yeah. pressure there um when did you first notice, like, you, you were gaining a lot more traction? When, I, when we did that trip to New Zealand. Did that trip mm. to New Zealand everywhere. I stopped people like, oh, you're Hayes Huntsman. I was like, fuck me. Like, I, had, I hadn't been to New Zealand in 17 years before that. Oh, mm. wow. You know, so it's not like they remember my face. Yeah. You know, well, they just they must have seen my fights. Yeah. Mm. Whereabouts was it? Like, whereabouts? Everywhere. Oh, did you? All oh, wow. Yeah, Island, yeah. yeah. Holy. Um, so we went, like, uh, like around Taupo, Rotorua, Hamilton, um, Tokoroa, where my dad lives, uh, Auckland. Yeah. Tok, yeah. yeah. Uh, Auckland, where my dad lives. Then we went up far north, where we went up Ahipara. Yeah. And even in Ahipara, like right. in a little cafe in Ahipara, mm. someone was like, 
Bro, you that boxer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. cool. But then, like, trying to that's still awesome. be humble too, like when people are like, oh, are you? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's me. And they're yeah. like, oh, are you finished with that food? You know, like, oh, <laughs> shame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's me. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> that's just, gold. So I'll sit there and, like, try and, like, just wait for them to finish. Mm. But then I feel like I am sort of, like, they're just like, oh, fuck, what if it's not him and I embarrass myself? Mm. So that we both just sit there quiet. Yeah. And I'm like, I do boxing. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you know it's coming in. <laughs> I like that. We went with a car wash the other day. <laughs> and um, the dude who like runs the car wash, he's like, you look familiar. I'm like, oh, I do boxing. I was like, oh, no, I think I said I'm a fighter. And he's like, that's it. You're the bare knuckle boxer, eh? <laughs> <laughs> that's cool, bro. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It's cool that people recognize me as the bare knuckle boxer too, mm. you know? And not just, oh, yeah, you're the fighter. Mm. Yeah. I feel like bare knuckles, like, oh, yeah, I mean, it is, it's like the most brutal sport on the planet. Like, yeah, yeah, it's almost not a sport, eh? Like, it's, it's pretty mm. wild. So, um, just quietly, just a little, little inside peep on, on some things that are happening. But, um, next year, I do believe that they are putting on a bare knuckle event in a coliseum. Really? In yeah. Italy. Yeah. Holy. Yeah. 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 That's, well, that's, that's throwing me back are, You guys that's... are pretty much modern day gladiators. So, what yeah. like better yeah. scene exactly. than to have it exactly. in the Colosseum? Yeah, yeah. so, like, I'm very, very interested in being right. a that, part of that. That'll be yeah. huge. Yeah, very interested. I want to try and get Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe, if you're watching this, bro, yeah. I want you to come with me. We'll walk out there and go, yeah. Yeah. Are you not entertained? Tag him. That's okay. Tag him. Tag him. Yeah, I will. I will. He's coming with you, bro. Yeah. You know they're releasing a Gladiator 2? It's coming yeah, out soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Seen that. yeah That's cool. a perfect segue, eh? But yeah, I don't know who the new right. Gladiator is. Me. Nah. Yeah, well, it should be. It should be, bro. <laughs> you heard it here first. There we go. <laughs> this Mary boy on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It would actually be pretty mean Gladiator, I reckon. Just yeah. Just quietly. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. Tyra, Patu, yeah, yeah do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. Um, oh, wow. So uh, I guess in, in, in that sport, ha, ha, is there much mental health challenges you have to face? Like amongst all the fame, Man, publicity, um, does it? Does it... From, a, from a, a outside, I guess outside and now coming in perspective, I, I feel like... A lot of the people that are in bare knuckle were broken or have been broken mm-hmm. at some point in their life. I don't feel like it's a sport that is for silver spoon people. You yeah. Know what I mean, people that were raised on a silver spoon. I do feel like it's everyone there that just fucking hard men. Mm. They're just hard fucking men, bro. So you know that they've, they've been through some shit. You can tell they've been through shit. A lot of them are ca- coming back from being addicts, mm. you know, and, and, some of the best dudes I've met and you know like I don't know why but in bare knuckle the ego that that is in and involved in in gloved boxing just isn't there yep. everyone is just so polite and so nice and even even your opponents you, know, you talk to your opponents they're, they're all just good top dudes bro you know that that I feel um probably do have some mental issues and and this is a healthy release for them I guess you know mm. um myself included um but yeah so yeah i'm, I'm really really enjoying being a part of that community mm. uh, hey. it's something i've always wanted to do you know like i my dream i never had dreams of i guess i did but being a world champion and this and that but i always 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 wanted to just travel the world and fight hard man. you know like mm. I, I wanted to be like like the gladiators you know like you bring your best warrior, we'll bring my best warrior, and we'll mm. just see who the fuck went. You yeah. know, like that, that sort of shit. And I always wanted to be something like that. Um, you know, like I watch, I watch movies, and there'll be wars happening, and and they'll be doing like their speeches before the wars, and like I'm getting covered in goosebumps, and I start crying, and everyone's just like, "Why are you crying now?" I'm like, "Cause I don't get to do that." Mm. That's where I feel like I was meant to be. I was meant to be on a fucking battlefield. With a sword or mm. a fucking patu or something, and just fucking Jeez. screaming down the field, at yeah, another dude, and just taking lives, bro. That's what I felt yeah. like I should have been doing. So now I feel like I get to live that in bare knuckle. You know mm. what I mean? And 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 now I'm traveling the world doing it. So it's you know, it's I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Bro. I love. That's it. so me. Yeah. I, I feel so inspired. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I go break my hands now. <laughs> <laughs> just like in my head, it just yeah. sounds so tough. It yeah. it is uh, brutal. I'm not trying to yeah. sound tough, bro. This, yeah. this is just you know that that's that's uh yeah, that's how I feel. Just how I feel, man. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever had a time where you've had to turn like a significant setback into a comeback? <laughs> Every day. <laughs> like, you know, um, that's that's yeah, all the time. Like injuries, um, losses. How is it? Like coming off a loss, how uh, does that affect your <clears throat> your mental? Because oh, I I, I know fighters as well, and sometimes you know they don't take losses too well. You know, yeah. so I take a loss quite well. I understand that a loss is part of life, um, and and anyone successful has lost. They have lost. They have overcome that adversity, or, or what else do they have to to draw off to keep winning? Yeah. What else? pushes them to keep on you know mm. how much can you know about yourself you've never been on the canvas you've never mm. been dropped you've never been knocked yeah. down in your life how much do you know about yourself yeah you don't know what your boundaries are you don't know where your limits are um so i take loss quite well like there's there's i don't think there's ever been a billionaire that didn't go bankrupt at some point <laughs> yeah <laughs> true. losses are a part of life yeah um so i take them well and then initially and then after a week, I'm just I'm never fucking letting that happen mm. again. Yeah, yeah. And then that, yeah. That's when I start going really hard on my training. And you use that as fuel for <clears> your next fight. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, like, and, and the proof is in in the pudding. When when I lost to Troy, I lost fifteen kilo. Got mm. you know the fittest I'd ever been in my life. Yeah. 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 So does that like what else helps keep you motivated and driven? Like, um, in your personal um, life, fighting life. I I don't like motivation. I don't because motivation motivation is like a, you know it's like a, a firecracker as opposed to a long slow kindling burning that's fire funny, yeah. you know what i mean like that's just, what cedric said on our last i know podcast. did you watch oh, that no, real no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know what i mean like it's, 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 it's like a really intense burn and then it crashes out and then and then you've mm. got nothing else yeah so you discipline get you there like like i've said a couple of times on this podcast i've got a job to do i just do my job that that's mm. what it is yeah the thing that does help me a lot though is my wife my partner yeah because hey, like, we're not credit gonna, yeah. credit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, bro, i'll just be eating boil up and honey all day bro yeah. you know? <laughs> like, no, you're gonna eat this. Yeah. so she cooks all my meals just puts it in front of my face and she'll like give me all my supplements and stuff. I don't even know what I'm taking, bro. Mm. She could be poisoning me, bro. Fall off like a. Uh, I've actually I've actually seen your reels, bro. And you're like yeah. popping it, and then you drink, and then you're you know, you're watching. She's just shoveling like, yeah. yeah, <laughs> um, Can you jump into your diet a little bit? Like, I don't know if you know all the exact details. Oh, like, yeah. we'll bring your wife on the podcast for that. <laughs> so um, I have a uh, a um, I guess what should we call him? What do we call Sam? I, I call him my coach, but he's a uh, nutritionist. Guess, right? He does that, but he's also he does like a lot of holistic approach on things. Okay, so like yeah. gets me writing daily diaries, journal entries. Mm. Um, we do ice baths and and stuff like that. Like he he he, he has helped me a lot. Sam mm. Pierce, his name's Sam Pierce, um, and he's the one who writes up my uh, my meal plan, and he sends it to me, and then I just fought it straight <laughs> to Talia. I don't even read it. No. Um, <laughs> you know and they they both they both keep me so so accountable like mm. bro like I, i'm the type of dude i can't just be like food is fuel i like enjoying my car bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm molding, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, i'll get a bit high and i'll just and, you know i'll have a whinge and i'll just be like bro fucking yeah 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 and, he's, and he'll just get he'll just straight up just get fucking shut up man mm. shut up and eat the fucking food bro. yeah and yeah come talk to me in two weeks you know mm. see it out for two weeks if you can't fucking suffer for two weeks for your family's benefit mm. Mm. then bro you're in the wrong sport you know mm. so you sort of you keep me accountable and, and then ta and poor talia has to deal with it all way me getting all high as well yeah. like, what fucking issues <laughs> just eat it man <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what does your average day look like uh, food wise at the moment i i draw a lot of like bro honestly i feel like i was born like a thousand years too late like i mm. feel like i feel like i should have been born back then so I do really well on my diets when I'm like, I want to be like a poor, like a poor gladiator, just eating whatever I can. You know what I mean? Mm, so, yeah. So we do my meals like that, bro. So like, I'm. I, I told I told Sam the other day. I was like, bro, I need you to make this as cheap as possible. Make it cheap. Mm. Make it cheap. 
um, so that I feel like bro, I'm still in the gutter. I'm still street. You know, I'm mm. still I'm still gonna fight my way out of this. Um, so breakfast is porridge and berries and protein <laughs> and collagen and honey <laughs> yeah, uh, with raw milk. I have raw milk. Yeah. Where do you um, get that from? Uh, you, I, I don't know. You're not even allowed to buy it, eh? But I yeah. get it from a place in the ring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's good. I think they call it bath milk, so they can get away with it. Okay, yeah. Milk that you meant to bath in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> tastes good though. Um, and then the next meal is just tuna and rice, and is that all? And pineapple. I take pineapple. Have two two things of pineapple. And then the next meal is mince and rice and pineapple. No, no, <laughs> pineapple. No, 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 it's all right. It's all right. This, this no, makes, you're all good. This makes it yeah, yeah. And then um, the next, oh, and sauerkraut. And then the next meal is, oh, is that my chicken one? Okay. Next meal is chicken, <laughs> kumura, and pineapple. No, dates. No, no dates. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> the mince. Okay, so the mince meal also has dates. And then uh and then I have like a almost like a dessert meal which is like um Pineapple? No <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um do I have pineapple that one? No. no. Okay. Uh Greek yogurt and berries. Yeah? Damn. Yeah. So that's that's, that's what I'm eating at the moment. But when I when I got to that point where I was at my lightest and strongest and leanest Man, I was having close to five thousand calories a day. Ooh. Yeah, holy heaps, heaps, yeah. But I was training. I was doing high intensity interval training twice a day, as well as strength and conditioning. Mm. Oh, so I was training three times a day, Monday to Friday. Yeah. Wow, that's that's. I like I like that. Like and, and that that sort of like, I guess that's a bit of motivation to train. You know, because I was like, man, I like eating this kai. But I can't do it if I'm not training. <laughs> yeah. like, Damn it! Yeah. <laughs> Got to do my training now. <laughs> no, that's good. Yeah. And then, are there any particular like people, philosophies that that you draw inspiration from, or like um, mm. anyone you look up to? I can't say or, I look up to people other than my koro or my dad. Yeah. yeah. What about like what about fighters in the past, like? Previous fighters, Muhammad Ali or something, or I don't know. Other... Not, not really, bro. Not really. You know what I mean? I, I feel like there's a Maori fighter that really mm. done it. Probably them, but yeah. Um, but there hasn't really been. Mm. Um, so, philosophy was I, I, and like this is going to be controversial, but I do like a few of the things that that Andrew Tate says. Mm. Oh yeah. Um, I yeah, bro. Hundred. I do like. Um... I better not say that on camera, but I do as well. <laughs> uh, like, uh, so- Socrates, yeah. Heracles, uh, fucking uh, Nietzsche, like Nietzsche, um, maybe even like like Jordan Peterson, um, yeah, Jocko Willink, um, man, I can't even think of them right now. There's a lot of those dudes. I really like Alex Hamosi. Yeah, Alex Hamosi. I really like him. Marcus Aurelius. I like some of his stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. cool. You know. Like some of those, those older sort of uh, stoic people. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. That stoic sort of mentality. Um, yeah, I sort of, uh, yeah, I like I like a lot of things like that. And then what advice would you give to your younger self? I don't, I don't think you needed it from me, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, everything uh, he went through brought me to here, where I am now, you know, and mm. I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, my direction. Um feel like I'm very close to retiring my mum, you know. I yeah. Like very close to uh to building an empire where, where my my children and my nephews and and their children um won't have to struggle the way that we did, you mm-hmm. know, growing up. So um I guess I guess the only advice I would say is just just keep going, bro. Just keep going, it's gonna get better soon. Mm. Yeah. Love it. Mm. That's cool. That's and then what about for aspiring fighters people who look up to idolize you and and want to get into maybe the sport not it doesn't even have to be bare knuckle boxing maybe it's yeah, like another I, type of fighting or... i couldn't um i i now that i've done it i can no longer with a clear conscience tell people to do bare knuckle um, it is a very brutal sport you know um yeah you know, i won my fight and broke both my hands you know what i mean mm, um, yeah 
you know. So, uh, you know, yeah, any, any sport, just um, just commit to it. Just just be disciplined enough to see it through. Um, you're going to struggle. It's going to be hard. Life's hard. Yeah, you've just got to you just got to keep seeing it through and and don't beat yourself up for the off days. Yeah, we all have off days, um, and that that was something that I'd done a lot when I was young, and I'd, I'd beat myself up for for my off days to a point where then they'd turn into off weeks and off months because I'd, mm. I'd get depressed or something like that. You know, so don't beat yourself up for off days. Um, it's gonna happen, but set yourself a job to do, get the job done, regardless of how you feel. Just get your mm. job done, um, and it all sort of works out in the end. That's cool. And then what are your future goals and aspirations for yourself, for your gym, for, for bare knuckle, for your career? I just want to be happy, bro. Yeah. Mm. I, yeah. I want to be free. I want to be free, you know. And um, in in uh, in society today, to be free, you've got to be rich. Mm. You've got to be able to make enough money to, to just do whatever I want to do whenever I want to do it, you know. Mm. Um, so I guess that's the goal, and uh, and 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 to see my family the same, you know, my partner, my kids, my mum, my nephews, my my brothers and sister, my father, um, to see them being the same, all healthy and uh, and free as well. Um, yeah. And uh, if if I have to sacrifice uh, my body for that, so be it. Mm. You know, like it. it People talk about titles and, and medals and trophies and belts and stuff like that, but bro, like this, there, my hands, my crooked hands, they're they're my they're my medals. You know mm, what I mean? Yeah. This year, yeah, the year they're they're a bit manky and a bit munted, but I'm building a fucking empire with them, mm. man. You know. Yeah. I want to free my whole family with them. You know. So this this is what I cherish the most. These things. That's I your story, that. yeah. Mm. Like that's that's mm. your story. Yeah. That's who you are. I'm I not- got goosebumps. Well, that's crazy. <laughs> that's inspiring, bro. And then, like, what about? Well, obviously, I suppose your career. You want to be number one uh, yeah, champion, look, look. champion. Or is it more than that? Like, it's legacy. To be honest, it's less than that. It's, it's like, less. You know, fuck about legacy, bro. I don't. I don't care who remembers me. I want my mm. family healthy. Mm. Yeah, that's cool. That's inspiring. You know, like, I don't care. I I just understand that. I have to be the best in the world to to do that. Mm. That's that's all I care about. I don't care about belts. I don't care about fucking none of that shit. It's all material, bro. You know, mm. yeah. family healthy. You know, I want I want to have grandkids that yeah, tell me about your kuro, mm. and they and they get happy. They they can't wait to talk about their kuro. That's what I want. I don't give a fuck about belts. Mm. I don't care about this shit. You know, material things. Um, I just want to be able to retire on my own big bit of land. Yeah. Like veggie patch, have some animals, horses, mm. and go hunting for my kai. And mm. bro, that's what I want. That's me. Do uh, you think it's funny how, like, it's everything sort of flipped around? Like, if you went back, say, 100 years, yeah. if you had your own land in your gardens, yeah. you, you were poor. But now, right. living in the city, you yeah. want to you yeah, get yeah, out. It's like it. the yeah. opposite. Yeah, yeah, 100%. But that, that Everyone's means, going back to the old way that, of living, eh? Yeah, I guess that that goes back to me feeling like I was born a thousand years too late. <laughs> <laughs> I do, bro. Like, I want to get rich enough to just disappear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go live off the land. I want to have... Um, In New Zealand? Or would everywhere, you... Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, travel. I want, I want to have land here. I want to have land back home. Um, mm. Yeah. Just everywhere, bro. Just everywhere. That's cool. That's inspiring. Are there any like upcoming projects that you particularly want to share? Or uh, not really. Um, there's, there's, there's a few things I can't speak about uh, due to contracts, but um, mm. you know I do have some big things coming up, and and um, I've got a, a training camp over in the UK um, with with uh, as I said Jimmy Sweeney, and I just want to thank my sponsors for helping me get here. You know, what I mean, like mm. no, I I couldn't do this. You want to plug them? Without them, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you can give them a plug. Yeah. yeah, so like, um, obviously proper streetwear. I see you're repping them Always. on the pod. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm repping, you know, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Proper streetwear. Um, Finance Motors, massive sponsor of mine. They're really, really good people. They work with um, Cars for Polynesians. If you yeah. want a car, go, go hit up <laughs> Cars for Polynesians. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Cars for Cousins. Yeah. <laughs> Polynesians. They're not all Taragos. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
cast for Polynesians. Also, uh, Real Steel, which is a, a a brand of um sort of fighter supplements that are coming out soon. Um, but they they help me a lot. Uh, I've sort of been doing like a lot of the testing on on uh, some of their supplements, and it and it works, man. Like for me to get my hands to where they are now, it's all because of this uh, Real Steel Liniment Rub, which is just the, just the healing factor sort of rub um, that I put on every day. Um, so yeah, they've helped me a lot. And also, um, oh yeah, yeah, Crown Men's Aesthetics, yeah, Crown Men's Aesthetics, um, yeah, they they do a lot for me as well, and they do uh, a lot for Talia. <laughs> she gets free facials and stuff, so Ooh. she's happy. Yeah. Oh, that's cool! <laughs> yeah. Happy wife, happy yeah, life, eh? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, I I couldn't um I couldn't do that without them. They pretty much fund and support everything, you know. So very grateful to them. Mm. Awesome. And then did you want to share your own socials? Um, I'll leave all the links in I'm the just, descriptions just below. Haze the anyway. Just haze the huntsman. Everything, but yeah. do, do you have like multiple for your for your boxing gloves, for your gym wear and stuff? Or is that oh. all on the same page? Oh, that'll all be on... Talia does this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so huntsmanbnbk.com.au. Yeah, he's got mean boxing gloves. So you have to check him out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Real, real leather. Those, real? Those gloves are real. Yeah, well, I, I couldn't call myself the Huntsman and, and not have real leather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Oh, yeah, and a lot of people think it's Huntsman Spider. I'm not a fucking Huntsman Spider. I'm a Huntsman, a professional hunter. Yeah. All right? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> people on the other side of the world get it because they don't have Huntsman Spiders yeah. over there. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, Hunter. And then people over here go, like, Huntsman Spider. What did he choose? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, only the Aussies would. Would yeah. do that, eh? Yeah. yeah. Or the true. Kiwis would be like, what's that? Yeah, they don't even yeah. have the menu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually get that a lot. Eh? A dude came up to me last night. He's like, oh, you're, you're the hunter, eh? I was like, well, I do hunt, but <laughs> do you mean the huntsman? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's <Go> cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, wicked. Well, that's all for the podcast, my bro. Nah, yo, nah, it, it's been a pleasure to have yeah, you likewise, on. Gentle, right? Gentle. It's, gentle. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's been an honor to have you on the show. Yeah, it's and, been um, an honor to be here, boys. No, kia ora. Kyoto. Kyoto. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nada to me, Kakwe, Moto Kodero. Ah, uh, yeah, Hemi Toto Kakwe, Moto, Moto, Fafai, uh, Kimua. Yeah, so. Alright, Kyoto. Kyoto. <laughs> and if you can't stop the waves, you can learn to surf. That's it. <laughs> well, sorry, that's just how we end the podcast yeah, yeah. every time. <laughs> Thanks, yeah.